Patrick Spence, you're the CEO of Sonos. Charles Martin, you're the Senior Vice President of Sound Experience in Sonos. Yeah, it's a short title. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. It, it means everything <laughs> and perhaps nothing. We're yeah. going to find out. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You guys have new products, big new products for Sonos. Big step forward in spatial audio. I want to talk about all of that. Patrick, let's start with the products themselves. Two new speakers, Era 100, Era 300. What are they? What do we need to know? Yeah, I mean, this is really the next generation of Sonos. So um, we're doing something very unique for us. You and I in the past have talked about all the changes we made to bring out at least two new products every single year. We've never brought out two products at the same time, um, and they're from the same family. And we really feel like with Era 300, we've set the standard for out loud spatial audio listening. Um, this is something the team's been working on for three years, uh, toiling away, you know, and, and kind of the industry has been developing along the way to have the content we need to actually bring it all to life. Uh, and it's hitting at the perfect time. And then with Era 100, we've really taken our iconic Sonos One and done what I'm very proud of, which is rethink it completely. New hardware, new software, all of it to create something that sounds significantly better um, and really matches the kind of visual ID you would expect out of Sonos in this day and age. And so it is a new era. Um, we're signaling that with the names of the products as well. Uh, we're very excited for customers to be able to experience them. I really want to talk a lot about the era 300 and with spatial audio, which is potentially revolutionizing the music industry in a variety of ways. But let's start with the era 100. I think we can kind of understand this product uh, fairly quickly. It sounds great. I listened to it with Giles earlier today. It's a full-on replacement for the Sonos One, as you're saying? Yes. What was the decision for you like to say, okay, this is a product that people like, we sell a lot of them, we're going to just move on? Yeah, you know, it's, it is, given what you always talk about on Decoder and the thinking behind it, the thinking is really, if you're not cannibalizing yourself and trying to raise the bar on yourself, then you're not pushing hard enough. And we, we have these debates all the time in terms of what we're trying to do and are we pushing hard enough and it comes a time, you know, seven years that we had the Sonos One out where, um, you know, kind of you get to itchy at that five, six year mark where you're saying, okay, can we do something much better than this? And Giles and the team and Chris Davies on the audio side and then our design team are looking at it saying, yeah, we think we can. We think we have something that we think we can do is much better that will raise the bar enough that it's something that we can be really proud of. And so we you know, kind of take a leap of faith in that moment to say, okay, um, what are the things we need to do uh, to make this product even better? Um, can we do those things? Can we fit it in there? And do we think it's really going to stand for kind of that leap in innovation and quality? And we feel like we've delivered that with the Air 100. So the Air 100 is a stereo speaker in a single package, two tweeters at the top, I think a bigger woofer than before. So yeah, unlike the, one, unlike the one which is a mono speaker, this is a, this is moving stereo. And, and listen... <clears throat> I love, and I still love the one. And it's interesting. I can walk into a restaurant or a bar and tell where there's a one in the bar <laughs> because it's a, you know, and in 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 my other world of uh, pro audio and creating content, you know, one is used as a reference by a lot of it, a lot of engineers and producers because it's a really honest speaker. And what I mean, that isn't hype or anything. It's 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 a a very very good scaled down version of what we try and do in a studio. So that's what one does, but in a mono format. That mono format is limiting because it it it. It, you lose things like reverb tails and voices. The, the reality of the, the things we don't listen to music in mono. So with Era 100, we tried to we we thought okay, let's rethink this, and then we you know we can then okay, we need to add more weight behind it. We need more more bass. We increase the woofer size we, uh, by 25 percent. And it was tough though. It was a really tough challenge. It's like you know. You know, you, 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 your children have to grow up. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> and it's like you know, and it's it, I really felt like that when we were doing it. One of the themes I see kind of across the big tech players in audio is they are adding an awful lot of computation to their speakers, especially the, the direct competitors to something like the Aero 100. The Aero 100 does not seem like it's doing an awful lot of excessive computational tricks, right? There's a crossover for the two tweeters mm -hmm. that create the stereo field. Correct. There's a mono woofer. Yeah, and that's the game. You're not. It's key for us as a company that you listen to music and not technology. It's like one of those things where you, we try not to hype anything at all. We try not to, and it, however dull that may sound as marketing speak, it's like having a clear window on the world of sound. It's like, you know, you don't want it to be, you, you don't want to, you want to, you want to literally just switch on a light or switch on music in your home and it sounds great. And the, the strange thing about 
artifacts and, and, and crazy stuff that's done is that after a while it wears really thin and it becomes irritating more than anything else. And, and, and someone said to me the other day when I listened to the products, they went, they sound like Sonos speakers. And I was like, well, that's interesting. From, you know, from my <laughs> point of view, I don't try and give us a sound. And I said, what, do you, what does that mean? And he went, it sounds musical. And I was like, great. Okay, that's what it should be. And so, you know, we are doing a lot of stuff under the bonnet. And we really are. You know, there's, it's a bit like fighter jets. They'd probably fall out of the air if, uh, if there wasn't, a, it wasn't the amount of DSP we're using. But I don't want to, you know, you don't want people to hear that. You don't want people to, you want people to hear a song. Yeah. Do you, I'm going to, a very subtly lit a trap for you about excessive processing because okay. right, spatial audio is like a lot of processing to make that work. And so when you think about the Aero 100, it does not have any spatial features. It doesn't have the height channels. Well, it's, but you're saying there is processing happening inside of it. Yeah, of course, because, you know, we're, we're doing, we, you know, for a start, we are... We're trying to create a bigger sound than the box is. We're trying to defy physics all of the time at Sonos. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do. Um, we're not doing any tricks with phase, but we are, you know, you, there are um, a slight delay going on there to create a stereo spread at the higher frequencies. You have to do that. At the same time, the most the, the key thing for me in this, actually what we worked really hard on the, on, the, on the 100 was, we could make the product a lot wider and more spatial than it is. But the detriment to that is voices, you know, a, the human voice doesn't sound as good. Yeah. You know, because when, you know, your listeners listen to music, we mix music in stereo and equal left and right is mono. And that's generally where the voice lies. And that's the songs you love. If you pull it apart too much, it's, it can sound phasey. It can sound weird. And so it's that argument processing over reality. Of course, there's processing. But the key thing is that is it has to sound natural. And that's done by human ear. You know, you can't measure natural, weirdly enough. Things can measure completely flat in a room and then sound strange. I feel like I'm so tempted to just immediately start talking about spatial audio, but I want to finish talking about the Air 100. Yeah. Um, because that, to me, the argument with spatial audio is when it's done incorrectly or done poorly, you actually lose a lot of that impact. You spread everything out to, to too many channels, yeah. and the, everything is And the distance. same if you play around with stereo too much. So if you like, you know, we don't spatialize stereo. It's, it's it, because... Again, it feels it's a bit like smashing some of the toffee ha hammer. You know, everything flies everywhere, and you're left with no middle. You know, and and its impact, like just drums and vocals. And it's fine actually if if it's a spatial audio track or it's ambient track. You can do whatever you like. All bets are off. And sometimes with classical music that helps, but generally, like most pop music or or hip hop or R and B is like it needs that. It needs that drive behind it. And we you know we have a, and it's really important to mention we have this sort of team of checks and balances. We have this soundboard. Um, which we run where, you know, like Mary Marroquin is, is just won three Grammy Awards. He's won, he's now won 17 Grammy Awards. And so, you know, he mixes Lizzo. It's a similar, we'll play Lizzo on an Era 100. And if it doesn't sound right, <laughs> we'd, we'd, our job isn't done. You know, it's that important thing. It's that scalability. You have to be honest. You have to be honest about what you're making. You kind of like this Napoleon complex of a little speaker going, wait a second, I'm going to beat myself through walls. You just have to make the best, you have to be honest. And, the, and then that becomes... That honesty translates into your home, and you enjoy listening to it. But I think that honesty is a key, and it, it you know it sounds somewhat cliche, but I think to Giles' point about the soundboard and all the people that we have on it, and all the people in Giles' network, we have them listen to these speakers and the mixes that they've done. You know whether it's the 100 or 300 to say like, does this sound as you intended it, right? And actually go through that. And I don't know another company that spends the amount of time we do going through that work on the way to actually launching a product. Um, and it's it's so important to making sure that we're getting it right. Yeah. So the Aero 100, it, direct replacement, you're getting itchy with the Sonos One. The Sonos One, very popular. It has multiple configurations. Are you going to do an Aero 100 SL without the microphones? You know, we're always considering, um, you know, what customers will want on that front. So we'll see, you know, um, what kind of feedback we get at this point. So. Are you leaving the One SL in the lineup? We are. Okay, yeah. for now. Yeah. And then I noticed we talked about Alexa a bunch of times today. Yeah. Does it support Google Assistant as well? Uh, Google Assistant has changed the way that they're implementing it for third parties. And so um, that's changed. So at this point, it won't support uh, Google Assistant. Um, our existing products that support Google Assistant will continue to, but uh, 100 and 300 will not. Is that 
because Google made a change, or is yeah. that because Google, there's Google ongoing made a change. litigation between no, you and it, Google? No, it has nothing to do with the ongoing litigation. You know, as you and I have talked about before, they, you know, YouTube Music, like all the different aspects, Google Assistant, the teams continue to work pretty constructively, but they did make a change in terms of how they do Google Assistant on third-party products, um, and it's a pretty big engineering lift for us. And, and the reality is, right now, we'd like to see it back on the platform, but um, you know, people are using voice for music, timers, and weather, right? As yeah. they have for many years, as you know. Uh, and we're well covered with what we have with Sonos Voice Control and Alexa. So we feel pretty good about where we are with these products. Did you assemble a task force to be like, all right, we need Bing to insult people directly from our speakers. <laughs> Just let it go crazy. Chat GPT is the future. Just let people talk to the AI. We'll, we'll let you sort it all out, okay. and then we'll figure out how we Every translate that into like voice do control. Some sort of weird I know, code I know, red know, exercise. No, no, we will focus on creating great speakers that people can listen to amazing music on. The and, Sonos and let AI assistant that, that yeah, reads no, all of Tumblr no, and says your no, music taste is shit no, is not coming. No, because I there are people that would buy that product specifically. Yeah. It was like, this song sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a better version of the song. It's the original. You're yeah. late. Well, our friends at Spotify did introduce a DJ uh, today, an AI DJ. I don't know See? if you saw that. So I'm telling there you, you go. this is the future. Is like, <laughs> you start listening to an album and it's like, I like the second album better. People would buy, I know people, like my friends would be like, I just want someone to talk to me about music no matter what it says. Um, I don't want to have my own opinion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what they're saying. I want a computer to have my opinion. Yeah, feed in all yeah. of Pitchfork, yeah, yeah. and then Pitchfork will tell you whatever you're listening to is tell a six. Me, tell me what I really like. <laughs> it's like we, we can go into a very deep conversation about art and anomalies in art about that. And yeah, music. and all of those conversations always kind of sound like you're having them with a moody computer anyway. Yes, it's still yeah. like yes it. that's right. Uh, big focus on sustainability with mm. the 100 and the 300. Lots of recycled plastic. Yep. Uh, we saw some custom screws today. Yep. There's more screws instead of glue. 93. Uh, 93 <laughs> screws in that 100. In the 300. In the 300. You're the CEO. When someone says, we only use screws instead of glue, also I need to make custom screws with hearts in them specifically. That's more cost. How do you weigh that kind of decision? You know, we're building products for... You know, the decade, right? As mm -hmm. we look at what we're trying to do, um, we think the, the the biggest thing we can do for the environment, for our customers, is make sure these products last for a really long time. Um, but we're always looking and pushing on what parts can be used from recycled. How do we do all of these things? How do we improve repairability? That's been a huge issue. And so the screws come in um, big when we're thinking about using, uh, being able to repair instead of using adhesives and being in situations where we have to throw away product because you just don't want to do that. So what I'm most proud of is we're getting better and better, not just on those fronts, but as well in terms of energy usage which, with each of the products. Um, but, but I always feel like at the core, the most important thing is, are we building something that can you know, reasonably last in someone's house for a decade, right? And I think we do that better than anybody else out there. Uh, and we'll, we will continue to push on what other parts can come from, um, you know, recycled materials and all of those things. How do we get better on repairability? We've made a huge leap with Aero, which is why we've decided like to call this a whole new line. Um, proud of that, and we're going to keep working on it. And it, it all makes sense when you're playing the long game from a cost and investment perspective, because I feel like you get more than that back over time in customer loyalty and everything else that we're trying to build. Speakers are one of those products that sit around people's houses for, for decades, yeah. if not more. Yeah. Um, obviously, Sonos has had a number of different approaches to upgrading products, trading products in. This is something you can take apart. Do you have a thought one day maybe it will just replace the sort of computer elements of these speakers and leave the drivers alone? I have a real hope that one day that's a possibility. Um, people call me crazy for doing it. Giles might even <laughs> right now. But I, I do think that's a potential possibility in the future. And I'd love to see something like that. And I'd love to see us pushing on how to how to be that company. Yeah. From your perspective on the audio front, right, a great pair of vintage speakers in a stereo setup with an all like people worship at the altar. I'm one of these people. I'm just going to admit it. But they last forever, and the sound there is lasting in a way that some people would argue cannot be defeated. A small computer with a bunch of radios in it that happens to have a digital amplifier and a driver, do you think that can be as long-lasting? It, it's based on CPU and not... I mean, I would mm -hmm. argue that people blow, blow old speakers all the time. So, yeah. uh, And I've been in situations where I've been in very high-end audio places where they play back mixes I've done, and I've gone... Your left channel's a bit weird, and they go, oh, Valve's just gone, sorry. <laughs> so I, there, there's a lot of ways of looking at this. There yeah. really is. Um, yeah, I think that, I think we proved, actually, you know, Rick Rubin had a, an old Play 5 outside his porch for 10 years, <laughs> you know, in the rain. 
Yeah. And it lasted. And that's not even... We didn't I think the last time Patrick was here, I was like, why don't you make an outdoor speaker? And he's like, I know a famous producer who's going to play five. So yeah. thank you for outing him. Oh, yeah. It's great. I'm not getting done. <laughs> Actually, I, to, I did his podcast recently. Yeah. I don't get done. I'll be okay. Um, <laughs> no, he's a good mate. Uh, so, yeah, I think that... I think I love the idea... And the, the ethos of Sonos, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, that, you know, I got involved in Sonos nine years ago now because they were the first company that asked me what was wrong <laughs> about <laughs> the sound of the speaker as opposed to tell us how great we are. And then on top of that, I love the ethos of we, we want these products to last um, because why not? We're not asking you to replace them. We're asking you to put more in your, more into yeah. your, your house. That's the thing. And it's expensive for us to do that. It's expensive for us for a number of different reasons for us to keep products in the marketplace. But it's the right thing to do. And I think that – I think there will always be a place for, um, you know, your – the, the it's not, I have – a whole load of speakers. You know, I have a full studio, so I have Abbey Road to use. Um, I think there's a place for things, but just as far as that ability to go think of a song and thinking of a song to listening to it, to wake you up with music or have music in your house or or, or gathering your mates and listening to Sonos is just brilliant. And that's what everyone says to me. And from my own experience before, I got sent a Play 3 and a Play 5, I met a guy, and I was in the studios in LA, and they sent it back, sent to my house. And I, you know, my wife was happy for me to have these speakers in the home, which is very rare. Well, my dad, who was George Martin, famous record producer, he had no, we had no speakers, and he used to listen to mixes in the car. <laughs> and my mom, my mom, you know, and suddenly we had music in our house, and that's the thing is that there's two different ways, and I think everything is. There's no better or worse. It's like vinyl or digital. What's your choice? It's like just enjoy music. Push towards lossless, and we're going to talk about spatial. But lossless and spatial seem to have come along at the same time, at least for the major streaming services. Can you hear the difference between 192 and lossless on the Era 100? No, on yeah. Era 100, no. Uh, but it's not that type of unit. It's not like you know. It's not a reference. Uh, we're not trying to build reference speakers. We're trying to build. Again, it's like we're trying to build the best possible scenario so you can enjoy all the music in the home. And there's an interesting point about this because, you know, I have, you know, a quarter of a million dollar setup in my studios. And yes, and I work, I'm head of um, audio and sound for Universal Music Group. And I work, I consult with Apple and other streaming services over their quality of their codecs and all that sort of stuff. Yes, I am that person. However, there's a point where, shouldn't you just enjoy a song? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? She yeah. just not, and people and people talk about numbers all the time. What do you prefer, one nine two or ninety six or what the? It's like wait a second. It's, I'm involved in this. It's just you know, and and I can hear the difference between certain things. And we've done tests and we've sent and we've done tests with Sonos because we're really interested in this. But this is super interesting because we have to make decisions based on this with pros like mastering engineers. And I have this brilliant guy, Greg McCarthy, who works with me, and he invented this system where we'd send Pro Tools sessions out um, with. Uh, 9624 files, Spotify streams, Apple streams, streams unnamed on some, and people's songs they'd mixed, and we'd send them which one do you prefer? Out of like completely blind listening. And it's amazing how many people didn't want to do it. <laughs> you yeah. know? There we are. So, so I think what we need to do is focus on the best possible experience for people. And, and that is, that is, I mean, listen, farm to table, as you'd say, is the best possible experience. And it's how do we get to that without transients and other objects, artifacts going on. And being honest about it is key. Last question on the 100. Uh, there's no height channels. There's no spatial push with the 100. You can still use them as rear. rear you can still use them as rears. Yep. But why no height channels? Why no spatial on the 100? You know, it, we're in the early days of spatial for sure. We wanted to um, really make sure that as we bring um, a product to the world that delivers the best, you know, experience and sets the bar. We wanted to start with the 300, and we think they're, you know, to Jal's point of like listening to music and people listening to music, and um, that there's room for uh, stereo speakers as well. So you'll see we keep the five in the portfolio as well for people that want to enjoy that. And we're in a we're in a transition period to me that's similar to the mono to stereo transition period where there's a lot of emotional energy about that transition. Uh, it took actually decades, if you look back on it, and there was both for a while, uh, mono and stereo and going through that. And so I think there's going to continue to be um, over this next period, and we want to be there for customers no matter what they choose. Yeah. Uh, I think there's people who are wondering, okay, I want the full Atmos setup 
from Sonos, particularly for movies, to get up firing rears now is a nine hundred dollar investment. Am I looking at a future where it will always be a nine hundred dollar investment, or are you planning on building that out over time? Well, I mean, that's uh, what is that ninety dollars a year? <laughs> you know, as you think about it, or like you know, we're talking ten bucks, you know, a, yeah. mu- a month kind of thing as we go through it, ten twenty bucks. So I think for the kind of experience that we deliver, I think there's value for money in that for sure. So. From your perspective, as you think about the split between using these speakers for spatial audio, Atmos Music, and then what's required for a great movie experience, is there a trade-off that you've made? Is there a balancing that needs to be done, or is it? No, I mean, <clears throat> that the, the first, it's funny, you know, when you're building a product which is, has multi sort of use and orientations, you do prioritize. You do prioritize in a way of like, what's the wow factor? The wow factor which I think is truly extraordinary out of the 300 is the fact that it does spatial out of a single box. And it's really compelling. To yeah. me, it's like there's nothing else on the planet that does what this does. I'm saying this as a creator and other creators as well. I mean, I'll, I, I say to people, and I'm, I'm not really Mr. Jargon at all. I'm pretty honest and I love music. I love sound. I love, you know, I'm passionate. And I'll say to people, I mean, I, I was at CS, a bunch of some producer engineers. I went, it really is amazing. And like they come to my suite and they go, oh my God, this really is amazing. The guitar's <laughs> like over by, I had a bar area because that's the way I roll. It's over by the bar area. Like, I'm going to, you know, that's where the guitars are. And it's like, I told you. And they went, yeah, but, you know, we didn't. And so that's, so the single boxing was great, and then if there's two of them, it'll do stereo, pure stereo, and Dolby Atmos out of stereo. Mm-hmm. Interesting enough, the way we think about it doing stereo, stereo Atmos, or two speakers creating Atmos, is creating front firing height, sides, rears. And if you turn those around the other way, that's your home theater setup. You're adding, you're adding, so, so it's kind of the same, the same problem, if you like it, an audio perspective or the same solution is probably a better way of putting it. So that's the way we work. And there is an additive and compelling um, drive behind doing this. It's, it's, you'd be surprised. I mean, I started working in spatial audio a long time ago and did, the, I think, Sgt. Pepper's, the Beatles Sgt. Pepper's album was the first album done in spatial audio, which I mixed. I then did Kick by NXS, and they, they were both used for, they played them back in theaters. Um, when I did Kick and they made the, the Blu-ray, because that's going back that far, I went to Capitol Studios and the rears were too loud. I went to Dolby and Wooten Bassett and the sub was too loud. I went to Dolby and Soho Square and the right-hand speaker was too loud. Quantum with discrete systems, you can be in a situation where people don't set them up correctly. The elegance of having one-box multi-channel systems like ARC plus two 300s is, is a pretty good chance with TruePlay it's going to be an even balanced sound. It's going to be rendering. And the dangerous thing about spatial audio, in fact, you get the channel mix wrong, it's worse than mono. But we have to make sure we, do, we get that right every time. The high channels are... Based on bouncing off the ceiling, right? Correct, That's where yeah. you get. Do you need to do true play to get the full Atmos effect? No, you don't. But true play does will adjust delays and and levels and EQ. And it's it's you know we we do true play for a reason. It doesn't. Um, you might you might indeed you might find that we might even reduce the height channel SBL because of true play. All it does is it's it's matching levels. So. You know, it's not like your heights won't. It's not as though like your heights won't work if you don't use true play, but um, your your balance will improve and your sound will improve if you do use it. So the Air 100 is kind of the big step forward here. It's a big investment into spatial. We are looking around. We are pretty sure this is the first standalone spatial audio speaker that is not connected inherently to a streaming service. Right? Apple obviously makes the HomePod. Amazon makes the Echo Studio. There is some. They would argue that there's some inherent connection there that makes everything work together better. What made you think it's, okay, we have to invest in this. This is the next great audio format. It was really hearing from Giles and Chris Davies and our audio team. We had a ton of debates in the lossless period and like high res HD. Can you hear a difference? Should we invest in this? What should we support or not? And we landed in the, okay, there isn't a difference. We're not going to go, you know, just chase this next technology. And, you know, I mean, Sonos is known for 
uh, taking our time to consider what's happening. And it was really an understanding of what was happening uh, with the artists and were they beginning to embrace it. And they were. And so we saw that three years ago and the labels starting to embrace it. And it seemed like there was there was actually momentum in the industry starting to happen. And so it was a chance, though, at that point, because it you know we didn't know that in 2022, you know, 85 of the top 100 Billboard 100 artists would actually release at most tracks. But they did. And so that's a good thing. We're at it. We feel like we're at an inflection point where more and more people are, re- are releasing in Atmos, which is great. Um, but that was the bet that we basically made. And it was on the back of Giles and Chris and the team basically saying, no, no, this is special. And this is one that mimics that jump from you know mono to stereo. And this is the next big one that artists are actually embracing. And so you know, for us, then it's like, okay, we got to be there and we've got to do this right. And so that took some time to go uh, build as well and do it right. But you know, if we're going to do it, we're going to try and really set the bar. And I feel like we have with this product. You're launching with support for, uh, especially from two services, Amazon Music HD, Apple Music. They are not quite the same. Right there are some format differences between how the services deliver spatial audio. That seems weird to me. What's going on there? It's not down to us. <laughs> you know, if it was, it wouldn't be. And it's not down to the yeah. music industry because, like, bearing in mind that I have this weird position where I am, you know, head of audio and sound for both Universal and Sonos. So I, I'm at the uh, the beginning of the source, yeah, and at the end of the source, which is kind of useful and actually beneficial to. You know, when Universal approached me after Sonos, Universal has been three years, four years, and I said, "Listen, you know, I do, and I'm loyal to Sonos. I, went, no, <laughs> I think we think it's a good thing, and you know, we work, we work together because you know, I knew at the at the top of the source, the stream that this this app, Dolby Atmos, the spatial audio was coming down the pipe. So I'm like, going, we need to embrace this. The way that Amazon or Apple deal with this is not down to us. It's not down to universally, it's down to down to them. And you know, we just have to we we have to partner with people and we have to be Switzerland, you know, if that's a not very old reference as far as as far as this is important to us that we provide an ecosystem that the that the music lover just I want to use this service so I should listen to it. But as a music lover, I know now when I'm listening to Apple Okay, there's an Atmos logo here. These often sound better than the generic spatial audio logo. And this whole thing sounds different than what Amazon is doing. What are the differences there that you have to well, contend d- with? Okay, so I don't think – I'm not hearing a massive difference between um, Amazon Atmos and, and Apple Atmos. There's also th- Sony 360 to bear in mind. Yeah, and, and Amazon so. Sports Hat as well. Yeah, right? yeah. and Amazon Sports Hat. So occasionally – and then there's the headphone Mm-hmm. thing as well. So if you listen to headphones, the way that Apple renders binaural is different from the way that Amazon renders up binaural. So it becomes confusing. When you listen to an Era 300, it'll be the same. You know, it's not the... The, 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 not, the Atmos makes sense. Yeah, so, so, so if you think about it, there is a... There, there's a different... I, I, I always su- surprised... I, I created this this love show in, in Vegas with 7,000 speakers in a room which is essentially the sort of template of Dolby Atmos. We have obviously a lot of height channels because it's in the round. Um, I never thought, and I made the, this 5.1 album, which I thought was going to be the future of audio, but then I could never listen to it on a system because I, you know, people don't have 5.1 systems at that, at that stage. I never thought the first steps in spatial audio would be headphones. Yeah. What's interesting in headphones, actually, is that it has become exponentially better as an experience really, really quickly. I mean, it was, I thought it was unlistenable about three years ago, and Same. now it's pretty good. However, the confusing thing for the consumer, which is goes off top of Sonos, and but it's something that, you know, that we care about because we care about sound experiences for everything, is that, um, you know, you, you can have a different experience compared to on different headphones spatially as well as spectrally, so EQ as well as spatially, and then on different streaming servers, whether it's Amazon or Apple. And in the universal group itself, speaking by that, it's one of the things we're working with both Apple and Amazon and manufacturers on unifying that experience because it's bad for the artists more than anything else. It's, and, it's, and it's the feedback we get from artists, whether it's like Mick Jagger or... Lizzo or whoever going, well, I'm not sure I want to do this because I don't, you lose control. It's like whack-a-mole. Suddenly I've put in my music, I don't, and so you need that, that, that stability to the, to the ecosystem in order to make it work. One of the things we're doing with Era 300, which is really groundbreaking and benefits the artists as well as benefits the Sonos, is that we've developed a bunch of units 
for artists where they can mix directly through as a reference speaker. So which gives the bonus like, A, it reassures them that the mixes can sound good out of a single box, and B, they can give us feedback if they don't like anything we're doing and we can change it. So they're on the, so with the binaural codec, that should happen as well. There should be a reference of what it should be. And that's why you get, that's why people get confused about the way it's rendered. So I would say that I thought headphone spatial audio was really where I heard the loss of impact, right? And it yeah. felt almost like, I don't know, you were going through a 90 CD player that had like the stadium yeah. button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And spread yep. everything out right. and, and sort of empty everything out. The demos I heard today, obviously, you were there. You made you made sure they sounded good. No, but I but you say that, but you know, we, and you asked me this question. So yeah. we so listeners, we were in a room, and pictures us, pictures the two of us in a room together. <laughs> we were in a room with um, like with 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 where they drew the curtains on the windows. Yeah, it was like and an eight by eight room. box yeah, with eight a flat by ceiling and, and a glass said, wall. I said, like, was, was this is this special design so you can hear spatial? I was like, no, this is designed so you can't hear spatial <laughs> audio. It's, the speaker was in the corner of the room because we had an arc in front of a TV. It should, if it's in the center, you had an even balance, all this kind of stuff. But I think that's cool. It's like you know, I don't believe that that's the only time you're going to listen to the product, so it's okay. Yeah, you know, and and and. <laughs> I, it's so important. The impact is the most important thing. Emotional connectivity is much important. That's why mono is kind of cool. And that's why here I talk about spatial audio on a, on new product we've invested a million dollars in. That that impact of and it's funny. I listened. I did. I I, I ringed I ring to a, a Chemical Brothers track. Um, or two, there's their new two new tracks for them. Um, and I listened to it in a Dolby Atmos room. And I had an Era 300 on top of the set of speaker. And I was playing around with the first time. I was playing around with the Dante, the, the, sorry, the interface where, where we, were, we, were, we were switching between the two. And actually, I kind of liked the central, like that immediacy you get from the 300, the era 300. It's like, that's hitting me in the face, like you did today, where you're absolutely right. Sometimes with Space Audio, you get that feeling. It's like, wait a second, have I hit the stadium button yeah, on my, where on my amp? Yeah. Like, wait a second, I'm just, <laughs> am I wading through audio all of a sudden? It's, it's, it shouldn't be like that. And that's the tricky thing is that we have to – as artists, as record labels, and as manufacturers of products, we have to, you know, work on experience. One of the, I would say, more cynical criticisms of spatial across the industry is, well, you know why Spotify can't do it? It's because the rights to distribute spatial are more expensive, and Apple and Amazon are just paying the money, and spatial is a thing that you can hear, right? Yeah. You can't hear it lossless, I think. We've all talked around the idea of not being able yep. to hear lossless. <laughs> Most people can't hear lossless, especially on their AirPods. Yep. But as a format shift, is it something you could charge higher rates for? Is something you could charge the consumer more? Spatial is hearable in a way that could lead to different rate structures. Has that been the background of your conversations about why to support this format, that the industry is doing this because it represents a format shift from vinyl to cassettes to CD onto the next thing? Or is it there's actually something very meaningful here that improves the experience. It start it started from the experience from you know what kind of where we are because you know for us it's not you know we're not involved in any of that part of it right and so well, from, is. from our perspective yeah, yeah. yeah partially but that's not how he's paid you no, know but yeah mentally. he is I mean God I wish I was <laughs> <laughs> you want to say can you get well, I'm just wondering if, yeah. if you can renegotiate my consultancy with the universe I'd be delighted <laughs> no but it's it's a valid call no, him up we're still seeing yeah, it's, it's, a, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a really valid point but I think you know you you know it, <laughs> I base things. It's funny when I way back seven years ago, when I mixed Sergeant Pepper in Space Audio. This man of mine, David Arnold, phoned me up and said he went to a room and listened to it. And he went, "It was the single most emotional audio experience he'd had." I was like, "Wow, thanks, David." And I then paid him. <laughs> the point is, is that you can really touch. What's what's you can travel through space and time. I know that sounds crazy, but like I did this get back thing with Peter Jackson last year, this get back series, and we did that in spatial. But then I mixed Let It Be, and I can put the room that Paul McCartney was in where he sang the piano mm -hmm. on the walls of your house. Yeah. So he is in the room with you. Now, you can talk about finance and ecosystems and things. That's why I do it. I do it so I can sit with Phineas in Abbey Road. And he can talk to me about how he liked, you know, will I do this mix in Atmos? And I go, have you tried mixing Atmos? And he then delivers like a cracking, we listen to that, like, like, like cracking mixes in Atmos. And like his engineer has an Era 300, which he uses reference. And that's, that's, that's the, it's fun. You know, we do it. Why do I do it? Why do I do this stuff with Sonos? It's fun. It's like <laughs> super cool. It's fun. 
Now, um, Seleucian, who is, you know, I respect, you know, definitely respect, but it's like, that's, that's not why. That's not why I'd sit with Patrick and go, listen, Patrick, we need to look at this because, and then, you know, Patrick literally sat in the room we were sitting in today and go, check this out. And it's like, and we, you know, we were with your daughter. And yeah. it's like, yeah. check this out. It's like, this is, you, you Amazing. Know, you're not listening to cash registers. You listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> Some people think they're listening to Cash Rush. Yeah, they, well, they're not my friends. <laughs> uh, it's weird that you can't. You mentioned Blu ray as a spatial distribution format. I would say that is not a mainstream distribution format. Yeah. I'm like very careful. Like, I'm in room with you two and like a bunch of Verge nerds. There's a lot of Blu ray players I did, in a I small did listen. vicinity. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, listen, yes, there listen, is. The, yeah. the question I got today from someone quite angry was like, why do you not release Revolver in Atmos on Blu ray? <laughs> I, you have to understand, like our producers are wanting to, like Andrew <laughs> they, wants they, to know they, the they answer. Would, to that they, question. They, they, he wants to know the answer. Yes, we we might do. <laughs> uh, it's not a mainstream format, <laughs> except for this room. It's weird that you can't own a spatial audio track. You can't buy one from Apple. You can't buy one from Amazon. It's all streaming all the time, right? Do you, is that just the nature of consumer I preferences? Can. I think you can. The Blu-rays are released. Okay, so Blu-ray is your answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, what, how else? Do, how else would you like to own it? I would like to download a file. Like, the, it's, uh, it, there's something. There's something yeah. underneath all of this, right? Which is like, as part of a consumer experience shift, there's a business model shift. There is a, an ownership shift. Yep. There's a yep. underlying bet on streaming. And to me, you know, like I like to have my music. I'm serious about it. And there's just a there's a weirdness where it's like I'm going to invest in this product from Sonos, and to get the most out of it, I have to pay Apple or Amazon for the rest of my life, in order to get the most value out of this product. And that just seems yeah, it's, I don't uh, think it's in your control, but, but it I seems like it's you, part of the change. Could, I here. think you'd argue the same thing about television. Yeah. You know, in essence, like what if I want to watch that? Well, movie? you're the one bringing up Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you brought up Blu-ray first, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blu-ray guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's. I mean, that is the that is the 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 nature of the beast. Now, yeah. of course, like you know, it's not down to us. Mm-hmm. He says, now talking on behalf of Sonos, which I am. <laughs> the, the I really be- lured you in here to to put you in like an existential crisis. Yeah, this is the welcome <laughs> to my life. <laughs> Luckily, my family's standing by me this difficult time. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 not down to uh, it's not down to us. We we deliver, you know, I lo- that analogy of like you know the window in the world of sound. We deliver whatever's coming through. And now, if someone wants to download it, I think you can. I mean, you can download HD tracks. I think maybe you you know, I'm sure it's funny. I'm sure that there'll be a stage you can download Atmos tracks. Yeah, I, I would think so too. But it, it is an interesting point I, to I, think about, right? And I don't, really seen a, that. I don't think yeah. that's a I don't think that. Listen, going back to the previous conversation, Your Honor, about <laughs> about financial services, I'm yeah. sure that if there's a like HD tracks, Universal, you know, we speaking as Universal would go. Let's do a deal where you, we provide downloadable Atmos files for a subscription fee, and you can download them. That's not. I don't think that's a. That's not a conversation we've. Then that we have to work at the ecosystem of storage. Well, it's, and it's how sort we, of started and, as a literal and, client. Yeah, that's right. Model. Yeah, yeah, yeah for the download. There's a long right. history. Here. Right. And then we yeah. have to work at a system of. I mean, open a, a can of worms for us. Thank you for asking the question of like storage and then playing back from a library. So which actually we can do because we we test files that way. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, from your perspective, right? You you do you Sonos runs a radio service. You've thought about recurring revenue models and different kinds of subscriptions. Is this something that you would light up as well? Okay, we're gonna have a spatial service, or we need to invest in spatial versions of the radio service. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think we want to keep making sure that Sonos Radio is there in terms of the best quality. We have the HD service today, so we want to make sure that we're there. And so um, that's something we're definitely focused on for the future. Do you think the Air 300 is a new product for Sonos is going to increase the number of spatial audio listeners, or do you think it's going to capture a rising trend of people using spatial in their headphones? I believe this is a moment where uh, there's enough energy from the streaming services, from the labels, and then with this product that it's going to bring spatial uh, to a whole new set of people. Um, and so that's that's why we're doing it, because we feel like we want to introduce them to spatial in the right way, and this is the right way to do it. And so I do expect a whole bunch of people to experience spatial the first time with Air 300. 
and there's been an interesting shift, sorry, to butt in on 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 age groups and listenership in spatial audio, which we see through the record industry of people, you know, leaning in and listening. Um, and, and and a new generation of listeners listening to even old catalog. Like there's been a huge boost in and and I think they're gonna wanna know what it sounds like out loud. And the weird thing is that, that, is that until now I don't believe, you know, there are you know, there are niche systems, but I think the three hundred, the Euro three hundred does provide you know, I know it does from from the working with Chris and Chris Stan, but it provides a very real yeah. way of experiencing it. And I found personally that I'm really enjoying like exploring music on it. You know, that's the thing. It's like, wait a second. You know, it's Miles Davis. It's like, this is cool. It's like he's in my room. I mean, you know, I'm not sure I want Miles Davis in my room, you know, for a long period of time. It's kind of crazy, but it's like, this is great, you know. But. I'm excited for our headline to be in Charles Martin Calls Home Pod of the Niche System. That's going to be great. Um, there are, very, that was very clever. Don't say anything. Yeah. I said that was very clever. <laughs> that's good. No, we're going to hold out. We're stop there. Um, there have been there have been more niche systems in the HomePod. Um, so let's make soundbars, right? There is a lot of soundbar Atmos in this world. There are ways to get Atmos yeah. audio into soundbars. What do you think the difference is? If you've got a five one four soundbar set up at home or whatever, is this a meaningful upgrade over that? Is it going to be different because it's focused on music first? Well, listen, we, I mean, <clears throat> it's been great that ARC has been used as a reference system in studios. I mean, there's, there's an ARC in Capital, there's an ARC in Abbey Road, there's an ARC in, you know, we have, we, we've been seeing a lot of reference. For, for Atmos Music, ARC is the main, has been the main reference amongst pros, which I found, you know, we start off, when, we, when we're doing it, when we're doing home theater, we actually start off with music. Because music is much more fragile than home theater, he says arrogantly. Being more <laughs> but I actually mix, I mix film, so I, so I can say that. Um, and but you know you can you can there's 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 much more of a um, of a fragility to music. If a song goes wrong, you hear it more than a, than a film soundtrack going wrong. And Arc has been used for that, but it's not built for that. It's 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 a home theater system first. And by its fit and form, it has to be by it being a, a tube, if you like, to be, you know, to be frank. So, yeah, it's like, you know, would I listen to, would I personally listen to an Atmos track on ARC, which has been used as a reference system for audio, for, or on Era 300? Era 300, without question. You know, but watching movies, ARC is great. But that is sort of the default Atmos experience for most people right now, whether it's the ARC or another sound yeah. bar. Is it... Worth saying, I need to put an Air three hundred in this room as well. Yeah, I think people, I think people hear it and they, and they say yes, it is. I think the way that the way the Air three hundred, um, and you heard it today, even in the curtain room where we we asked we are, what what trickery we were up to. I think that the 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 um, the spatial aspect of the, the way that it projects discrete audio, which it sounds very real. It's not blurred like a guitar can be on your far right hand side. It sounds like a guitar. It's kind of amazing. I think, yeah. I mean, I'd I'd have one. I have one. Would and I think it's the simplicity too. Just like you know, it's a speaker. You know, it's there. You know, it's for music. In terms of what's there, the, the there still is a seems to be a mental barrier for many people in terms of listening to music in their home theater kind of setup, right? And so it's another room. Is it the kitchen, a living room, a sitting room, an office, wherever it's going to be? But there's something that screams music about the Era 300. Yeah, this is the part where I just start asking you for new products directly, Patrick. Where is my receiver with Sonos built in and TruePlay built in? Did you in see our works with Sony with Sony that we did the works with Sonos work on their receiver? So there you go. But I still got to buy another thing. Yeah, I want yeah, I yeah. want you to make it. I want you to be responsible for it. That's if I can I'm get after. your updated list, I'm happy <laughs> yeah. to take your updated list and start uh, working. I do. Yeah. I, I do feel like I need to end by sort of asking more expansively about Sonos. Yep. Um, Right, there's a big split now. Uh, I listened to your last earnings call before the Aero 300 was announced. Speaking of the HomePod, you were basically like, "Yeah, big tech stopped competing with us. There's like nothing on the market that competes with us." For a minute there, that seemed like an existential threat. Right, the, the big tech players are coming. They were locking the streaming services to various products. Why do you think that threat has passed? And do you do you see a sort of resurgent moment for Sonos right now? Absolutely see a resurgent moment. You only have to look at our holiday results. And if you look at what happened over that period, there just wasn't, as I said, a lot interesting happening in the space, right, from anyone, quite frankly, whether, whether legacy or big tech side of it. And so I think, you know, we've 
we've always been very focused on how we build this for the long term in a sustainable way. We didn't get caught up in some of the hype around, you know, voice going to be voice is going to be the next, you know, mobile operating system, GBT, all of these speakers, things, man, right? Exactly. And I think I think we live in a day and age where very quickly people's attention turn to the new new thing. We get all fired up about it. It dominates the headlines for three six months. You know, I mean, whether it's voice or whether it's crypto or whether it's Web three or whether it's now Big AI on the speakers, right? And and so yeah, when we don't and and we we don't we try to be we try to think about what do these things mean for consumers as you think about it you know a decade long period, and we continue to innovate in terms of what you see with the Era 300 and the Era 100, but products that are going to last for a long time. And it's never it's never with an ulterior motive of trying to capture your data or sell you another service or all of these things. And so I think our you know clarity of what we do and why we do it you know, has helped serve us well in competing with, you know, strong legacy audio brands that we had to come from nowhere to, um, you know, be in the position we are today. And then even when big tech jumped in and infringed all of our intellectual property, um, we could still keep innovating, keep competing, keep growing um, and make sure that we would come out stronger. So I think it's a testament to our focus and our commitment to doing what we do really, really well. And I think it shows you that, you know, hopefully it gives hope to other companies that, you know, just because big tech's going to jump into your space doesn't mean you should, you know, follow what they're doing necessarily. Like if we had, if we had built a, you know, twenty-five or fifty-dollar speaker, I think that would have been a huge mistake, right? And we, and you and I talked about that before. I, I don't think you respond in that way. You look at where your strengths are, what you need to do, and how do you compete uniquely in that situation and build on your strengths. And the Era Three Hundred is a perfect example of building on our strengths and going after that. And so, hopefully, this is a bit of a, you know, a inspiration to others that are building their companies and want to compete in an era where we know it's been very difficult with big tech coming in and you know jumping into all these new categories. The last time I spoke to you, you did not have the head of sound experience. You had your lawyer. You had your general counsel with you. Uh, And we talked about the big tech lawsuit. Thank God it wasn't me, is all I can say. I think, (laughs) honestly, you guys should switch spots. Yeah, yeah. He's great on sound. (laughs) He's like, when I did love. Yeah. Yeah. How many speakers has the lawyer put up before? Is it seven thousand? Yeah. Um, uh, but no, how how is the Google lawsuit going? Are you closer to a resolution? We saw the antitrust bills in Congress sort of come to nothing. Yeah. What's going on there? You know, um, so uh, the spring we have the Northern District case, you know, happening, and so mm-hmm. we'll see how that all plays out in the fall. We have the Southern District case, which is a uh, the federal circuit off the back of the ITC uh, that we won very handily. So these things continue to progress through the courts. Uh, we're ten for ten against Google in terms of their. Uh, Frivolous actions against us um, to distract and uh, make us spend, you know, money. Um, so we feel good about where we stand uh, today, and we're going to keep fighting for our intellectual property. And you know, um, if people infringe it, um, we're going to work with them uh, first. But if they, you know, don't come to the table as Google didn't, then we will take it to the courts. And and we. You know, are in a position, thankfully, because of a lot of hard work and and everybody's efforts, where we are in control of our own destiny, and we can do that. And I feel that it's important for all the inventors at Sonos, but I also feel it's important for society that we stand up in these situations and say, no, you can't go and infringe what somebody else does. And so, um, I have faith that the you know the courts will ultimately uh, help us and will prevail. So. Across the spectrum of big tech, it's actually kind of inconsistent how they're supporting this next standard. Apple and Amazon are doing it. Google is not doing it. Spotify, I think most notably, is not supporting it yet for any number of reasons. They actually announced like Hi-Fi two years ago, today on the day that we're talking, and it's come to nothing. Are those conversations you're having like, hey, we're going ahead with spatial audio. This is the future of music. Are you coming along for the ride, or are they just missing out? We, we've definitely been out there um, talking to all of the streaming services, uh, trying to rally everyone around this because we believe it will be the future. Um, and people just work on, you know, they have their own roadmaps and timelines and strategic priorities and all of those things. But make no mistake, we've been out there absolutely letting them know Air 300 is coming, trying to get um, their support, make sure we're all lined up. So yeah, we'll keep doing that. We'll keep doing and, that. And and. and and I think again, experience and 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 consumer reaction will 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 decide as well. I mean, also, you know, automotive, which you know is 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 becoming bigger in spatial audio. And I think did you see the Mercedes E Class announced today with yeah built-in spatial for Apple Music? One. Did you did you do the TikTok camera? 
I didn't do the TikTok camera. So it has a selfie camera inside of it. You make TikToks while the car drives itself. This is the entire future of all media, is my, is my feeling. This is, this is becoming desperate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like the headline was like, supports Atmos from Apple Music, and the subheadline was selfie camera for TikToks. And I was like, we should split those around. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we, we are not putting a selfie camera to TikTok in any way. No, we are not. No, we are not. But you think it's coming to cars, right? I mean, I, every car has it had is. sort of like yeah. a fake surround I, 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 well, mixture and I, I think, it. again, the experience has to be good. You know, yeah. that's it, – it's like – and that's the thing about Spatialist. That, you know, if, you, if it's done right, which I think we've done, then it's a really compelling – it's a really compelling experience. And, and I think companies will get it right, not just us. And that will then shift the um, – consumer experience and therefore that will influence people like, you know, like Spotify will then you know have to come to the table. Do you think there's going to be a wave of overly aggressive Atmos mixes in this period? Because that's what I'm that's what I aggressive hear. Atmos mixes like you know people throwing things at studio walls and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just like the guitars are over by the bar for I no think, reason. Well, it's interesting because in lockdown um, I was sort of overseeing Spatial audio for and quality control with a, with a team of like fifty engineers that were you know it was it was like mixing 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 and yeah I mean there were times where it was just like it's like early stereo you know yeah. early stereo was crazy and absolutely I think it settled down you know you know um, I'm hearing people do mixes now which are just truly outstanding and not advanced as far as spatial goes, they just sound good. And that's the point, you know, okay. You, you, I mean, I know from experience, if, I mean, I've just done, you know, a whole load of big artists and Atmos, something like the Stones or the Beatles, you know, in the main, the Rolling Stones, you, you don't, Angie, you, you don't want things flying around your head. It's like <laughs> acoustic guitar, strings and drums and bass and vocal. Chemical Brothers, you want things flying around your head and going through you and hitting you in the face and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's it's music dependent. And that's the great thing about building like an Era 300 is that then you should then have that product that realizes that in your space. So for instance, I can put Paul McCartney back in Abbey Road, singing in Abbey Road, and the walls of Abbey Road becomes the wall of, walls of your home. That's super exciting. That's like really compelling. The Chemical Brothers, you know, you're, you're, you're at Coachella or whatever. It's, you know, so... I just think, and I think, I think that's just one creator. There are people who are doing amazing things, space audio. And you talk to creators. We did a we did a panel in Santa Barbara with a bunch of creators. It was really interesting. And like Manny Marroquin, who mixes just about everything now, he was like talking about how it freed him up, how space audio frees him up to thinking about he's you know he has to put you know mixing Lizzo or something like that. He's having to put everything in a, in two speakers. And now he can open it out, and we just have to represent that in the home. I was definitely complaining about spatial with somebody who knows, and they said, "What are you doing? Listen to Tiesto." And I listened to Tiesto. I thought this would be amazing if I was on drugs, and that's like the highlight. I yeah. was not yet on drugs yeah. yet. Um, I want to end here. You are the expert, Giles. I there's no way I could offer this instruction to our audience. So I want to ask you for it. We're about to come into a wave of hype around spatial audio, right? This is, I would say, the Era 100 is the the tip of the iceberg in terms of product launches, in terms of hype around this stuff. In terms of listening at home on not a soundbar, what should people be listening for? How do you listen? How do you listen intelligently to a spatial mix <laughs> to know if I it's any good? A, it's a really because I think right now everything is just like, what if it was all around you? And I, that doesn't that doesn't seem like the right answer. Listen to your heart is what I would say. Yeah, we're done here. It's no, <laughs> you know what? You know what? You can dismiss that, but like you can sit there. But honestly, yeah. it's like people. It's, and it's and this is from someone who has to analyze sound and like I have all of this opinion. There's nothing better than someone putting on music and you being with a friend and listening to it. And it's not a question. So in spatial audio, you can close your eyes and you can you can think about where everything is. Think about how your room. Don't think about. And this is what I love. Don't think about the speaker you're listening to. Think about the song you're listening to. And. Technically, for a bunch of different reasons, we can achieve that in the artist space and the product space a lot better with spatial audio because we can project sound and because we have channels of projection. You know, spatial audio is multi-channel, stereo is two-channel, mono is one channel. We have this channel cam where we can actually project color on the walls of your home, and that's what you listen to. Listen to um, 
But above all else, just see whether you enjoy it, see whether you dig it. And that's the thing. And it's really interesting. Sometimes you listen to a track and you go, you know, it, this isn't very spatial, but I'm enjoying it. It doesn't have to be wide for you to enjoy it. Yeah, I answer it. What's your favorite spatial track? Uh, the one I heard from Phineas today is, oh my gosh, was incredible. What to, I don't know what the name of it is, but uh, it was. it's a new one that Phineas just did, and it is... Oh, you've got to hear it because you feel it. I think that's the thing to me is you absolutely feel it. Concert five years from now. Concert five years yeah. from now. You feel it when you're there and it, it feels like you're somewhere else, which, uh, you know, I, I'm, I've am i been in tech long enough to be cynical about all these things. And I really do think Giles nailed it with, do you feel it fundamentally? And when you close your eyes, what does that feel like? And, uh, you know, for what we do, that's about as good as it gets. Well, Patrick, Charles, thank you so much for joining us today. This is great. Thank I can you. probably talk to you about spatial audio for another five hours. Well, I can come back later on. Yeah. Between the Beatles fans losing their yeah. minds and your comms people losing <laughs> their minds, it is time to go. I'll get the Blu-rays <laughs> done, guys, okay? I'll, get them. I'll make them for you. You can just have Blu-rays from now on. <laughs> Amazing. That was great. Thank you.